welcome also especially those who are watching this on Ligate Outreach TV or those who are listening to the podcast. I want to say that we are truly grateful that you listen in and you watch these messages. Grateful because you are helping us to get the word that the Lord has commissioned us to get to our world spread even quicker. And so we want to appreciate you. I thank you for those that sent in testimonies, particularly in the course of this week. May the Lord continue to honor you and cause these words that you hear bear fruit in your lives, even as it's bearing fruit in ours. In the name of Jesus. I want to truly thank God for the privilege to stand before you to bring the word today. I don't make light of it because God is so mindful of his people. I have read the whole scripture many times, Old Testament, New Testament. I have never seen a place that shows me that God is not concerned about people. People matter to God. Any vision, any mission that God sends anyone to have a church plant, to have a Christian mission of any facet whatsoever is always about people. It's never about anything else. So you are very precious in God's hands and I want to encourage you to remember those words that the Father's love is surely your portion and may you continue to bask in it in the name of Jesus. Today we want to look at the kingdom prosperity key of skills. Last Sunday, we started a series of uh, 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 messages with uh, the kingdom prosperity keys. And uh, we looked at the kingdom prosperity key of learning last week. And we emphasized how important it is for us to apply ourselves to learning. We are building gradually on those things. And we are taking a step back at the same time to look at something that forms the basis for which you and I exist. It is called our skills. We have a banner today that just simply shows uh, a layer of many things. This particular image is used by many training organizations to describe the many things that go with skills. And they have things like teamwork, education, awareness, efficiency, experience, business knowledge, talent, knowledge, career. Everything like that is underpinned by skills. But I want to say that a skill really is just the ability to do something and to do it very well. It's just the ability that God puts inside you to be able to display some form of expertise. Many of us do not understand that in us are skill sets that are manifesting because of the talents that God has put in us. Everyone, everyone, and I repeat, everyone is born with a set of natural giftings and talents. And these are put in us by God. They are unique to you. They are particular to you. No two people on this planet have the same set of skills in the same measure, in the same form. In the uh, mathematics of God, if there are seven billion people, there are seven billion plus skill sets because some have one, some have two, some have ten, and so on and so forth. We must understand that whilst everyone is endued with these talents and these giftings, Jesus and the word of God makes us to understand certain things that we as believers must know. When something is common to man, children of God must understand what makes the believers different from the common ground on that matter. Children of God must understand the purpose for which God also allows them to walk in those same things that are common to everyone. So if everyone, whether born again or not, has a natural talent in them, what does God expect of us as Christians with our own natural talents and also of the people that uh, he has placed those things on their inside. So Jesus gave a parable in Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to start from there today. From verse 14, the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. So the goods were his, the servants were his. 
just like we are gods and, he, and uh, the gifts that he has given to us are his. The Bible makes us to understand that he gives us the gifts as he wills. So nobody has any talent because of anything that they have earned. Or we have a talent just simply because we were able to do anything. We are born with those talents. And I know that not every talent that everyone is born with eventually gets used and it get, eventually gets to become a skill. But this is what we're here to learn today. How to make sure that nothing that is given to us is dormant. Nothing that is given to us is not maximized as God desires. So verse 15 says, And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each, somebody say to each. Say to each according to his own ability. Not the giver's ability, but the recipient's ability. And immediately he went on a journey. So as far as he was concerned, all those talents are his and he can give it to anyone. But what he's always doing in everyone is to look at the ability. What I also usually always refer to as the capacity. Everywhere in scripture when God is about to do something to bless people and to transform their lives, he always asks for capacity. Can I have a reduce on the echo? He always asks for capacity. He always would say, like I said to the workers on, uh, on, on Saturday, those of you that were there and came on time as well, I said, look at all the miracles of scripture. They will always have to do with what you have. He asked Moses in front of the sea. He said, what is that in your hand in front of the Red Sea? Moses said, it is a rod. And that was it. And then he looked at the people when he was in the wedding of the Cana in Galilee. He said, bring the water pots, as many as you have, and fill them with water. There is something you have that God has put there to generate the thing that you need. Everyone is born with that thing. But what you and I must understand is that God expects us as we grow to allow our capacity to grow so that whatever it is he has put in us can be uh, enhanced by him so that we can become the persons that he wants us to be. And the Bible says he gave to everyone according to his own ability and then he went on a journey. And you can read this on to verse 30, but verse 19, the Bible says, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. This simply means that our giftings are for application. Somebody say application. application. And accountability. accountability. Accountability is made of two words. Accounting for your abilities. Everything God has given to you and I, we will give account of. The reason why we must not allow any gift of God in us to be latent is because we have been given it to deploy it so that we give account at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. And so for the believer, the use of your gift is a non-negotiable. The use of your gift to become the skill that the Lord is allowing you to walk in and operate in is a non-negotiable matter. We cannot learn talents. We can strengthen them we can practice them, we can enhance them, we can grow them into skills and various skill sets because each talent has a potential to produce different kinds of skill sets. For example, if a person has a talent of public speaking, it can generate many skill sets. It can generate skill sets of preaching. It can generate, that is in the spiritual realm, it can generate that of teaching. It can generate that of motivational talk, nothing to do with the gospel as, as it were, but just to motivate people and encourage people. It can generate the gift of teaching people, not necessarily religious subjects or spiritual matters, but in any area of endeavor. Just that one talent of the ability to communicate with other people. Not everybody has it. There are people who lose track the moment you put two people in front of them. They can cope with one, very well, but the moment you place a second person in front of them, they, 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 they just can't handle it. And there are people who thrive the more the number of people you place in front of them. It is 
a, an ability. It is a talent that God has put inside and he's expecting you and I to develop and strengthen the more so that we can manifest the skills. Hallelujah. So we are all born with these talents. When you discover your talents, what you do is you help yourself to develop and deploy the skills that God expects you to deploy that will glorify him. And then you begin to experience kingdom prosperity. I've said to you many times, kingdom prosperity is finding fulfillment. Kingdom prosperity is that place where you are able to do everything God has commanded you to do. And you find that there is joy. There is joy in the place of deploying your skills. That is why you find energy. Some of us who do what we do now, not for, as I'm ministering to you now, not for a salary or for a reward of money, find energy consistently. I always tell my wife, by 2 p.m. on every Sunday, I'm already living in the next Sunday. It's a mystery. I'm already wishing that the next Sunday can come in two days' time. And I'm not paid for doing that. It's a mystery because it is a joy to have your skill set being deployed. And so I want to encourage you to understand that you may have studied something, you may have learned something, and you may be working somewhere. That is good, but it doesn't have to be the end of your life. As long as you find that what you are doing now is not as fulfilling as what it ought to be, keep digging deep. Keep digging deep to understand the talents that are inside you to become who God wants you to be. Praise the Lord. And every one of us must come to this place because when we come there, we experience true kingdom prosperity. This is a continuous sense of fulfillment that causes prosperity of the spirit, soul, and body. And as you do those things, finding joy, finding fulfillment, you find that indeed all other things that people tend to seek and pursue after truly would come after you. I pray that it will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Am I saying we should not work for money? No. You should work to earn a living, but don't let your ultimate goal in any career or profession or skill set that you are using be that you just want to make money. Let it be that you want to add value. You desire to let God walk in and through your life. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. The beforehand there means before you were born. That's what he said to Jeremiah. He said, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you and then I ordained you a prophet. That is to say, I put inside you the talent and the abilities that will make you become a prophet. Hallelujah. He said that that is what I have done, that we sh you should walk in them. He said, we are created in Christ Jesus for good works not created in Christ Jesus for making money. When we do good works, money comes. Matthew 6.33, when you seek first the kingdom of God, who created you in Christ Jesus for good works, all other things that the Gentiles are seeking after will naturally come unto you. I said they will come unto you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want you to know, friends, that there is no body on earth, no body, and I repeat, no body, that truly commits to Digging deep into the giftings and the talents that God has put inside them and go on to develop it in the skill sets and deploring it as God ordained that will ever, ever be put to shame. It is a place of strength. It is a place of honor. It is a place of dignity. These giftings might manifest both spiritually and vocationally. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 says, Having then gifts differing, According to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Let us use them. Let us use them. Say to your neighbor, your gifts are for me. Your gifts are not for you. Use them for me. Many people think that their gift is for them. The Bible says he gives us severally as he wills, but it is to the profiting of all. It is to the benefit of others. When we hoard our gifts, we, we make it impossible for God to prosper us at the level he desires to prosper us. The people that are paid 350,000 pounds per week because they are kicking 
a leather painted black and white or at times other colors on a weekly basis if they were doing it in their bedrooms no human being will see them as gifted as they are the same people the same legs the same stature the same everything if they don't come out of their rooms and go to the field to deplore that gift and show that they can play it at the highest level Nobody will reckon with them, no matter what they are called, whether they are Ronaldo or what is the other one called? Mario. Is it Mario? Yes. Eh? Yes. Messi. I say Mario. <laughs> whether they are Ronaldo or <laughs> it means nothing. The other time I was in Barcelona and I saw how they were adoring in Inuendo or Inuesta. What's his name? Iniesta. Please forgive me, whatever I call them. When I saw the man, I was shocked. He's this high. I said, what? <laughs> I said, this man whose name has gone all over the world. But because there is something in that place called a gift. Verse 7, if it is ministry, use it in ministry. He who teaches in teaching. That means be skilled at teaching. Don't just say, I have a gift to speak, but apply yourself to extensive teaching and the skill sets that will make your teaching more effective. He said, if it is exhortation, use it in exhortation, verse 8. If it is in giving, do it liberally. Anyone who, everyone is expected to be a giver. The Bible says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So everyone who wants to be blessed must be a giver. But there are people who are uniquely gifted, who are uniquely given the ability to know how to create what it takes to be givers. He said, do it liberally. You have to apply yourself. Philanthropy is not for everyone. It is for a few people, but those few people must not fail the world. It is not everybody that can become a president or a prime minister. It is impossible. But the few people that can become must apply themselves and face what it takes to become that thing. Every one of us must understand what our potentials are and must keep stretching ourselves to become what God wants us to be. He said if it is in leading, do it with diligence. Learn how to be diligent in your leading. He who shows mercy, do it cheerfully. Don't show mercy because you are under compulsion. You must understand that it has to be done cheerfully. Hallelujah. So these are spiritual gifts. In Exodus chapter 35 verse 30, we are told that Moses said to the children of Israel. Let's read it verse 30. Read together with me. See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, read with me out loud, please. Verse 31. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. He has given him the Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, but it is all about workmanship. Let's read verse 32 together. What is all that to do? To design artistic works. To work in gold and silver and bronze. In cutting, verse 33, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. The man called Bezalel was specially endowed with this great gift of craftsmanship. He was specially endowed with this great ability to take things that are raw and sculpt them into what is desirable. It is a gifting and Moses was commanded by God to speak to the children of Israel to bring out such people. Verse 34, he has put in his heart as well the ability to do what? To teach. Verse 34, read it with me please. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach in him and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamak of the tribe of Dan. So he was good with the hand, but also good with what we would today call knowledge transfer. He was also gifted with the ability to transfer that knowledge. Hallelujah. Verse 35, and then the other one, Ahimashak, but verse 35 says, he has filled him with what? Skill to do all manner of work 
of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen, and of the weaver, those who do every work and those who design artistic work. I don't know whether you have discovered what your skill sets are, whether you have discovered your gifting, but it is a lifelong process. You have to continue on a daily basis. Some of us have talents that we do not know about, but they keep expressing themselves, and some of us are suppressing them because we think that they don't mean anything. We must understand that these gifts are there by God for us to be able to manifest and to do his will. The ultimate goal of our gifting is so that we glorify God in all we do. Praise the Lord. As long as it lies within you and as long as God gives you the capacity, you have to keep using everything that is on your inside. Let's read Exodus chapter 35 verse 10 together. Verse 10. All who are gifted artisans among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Say, what the Lord commands is what I must do. When you understand this, you find that work no longer becomes a chore. The reason why many people are in traffic at 9 a.m. and are fighting everybody else is because they are going to where they shouldn't be going. Many, many people. Believers, unfortunately, and unbelievers alike. When you are driving to where you know that there is a joy in what you are going to do, you don't fight people on the way. <laughs> it's not because they are not paying them much. Some people that you see fighting, they are paid 90,000 pounds a year. 90,000, and he's still fighting people on the road. Because that 90,000 means nothing to him. <laughs> he's in the wrong trade. He's in the wrong profession. <laughs> when you see people who enjoy their jobs, they have understood. And I know that many people are forced to do certain things because there are constraints and, and all that. And I'm, I appreciate that. But I want you to understand that in life, you have a responsibility to find what keeps you going and to go for it. There are certain jobs that you do that is to help you to do other things. You must understand that. There are certain things that you do that their role is just to develop your skill set. One of the reasons God told me to stay in employment is that it will develop your skill set in understanding the pressure that comes from above. He said when you understand the pressure that comes from above, you can always understand what it means to have people who have to work with you. And you understand it. For as long as God wants to put you in such a school, you are doing it not because you have to, but because God commands it. Hallelujah. But then you find joy in obedience. The biggest joy you have in life is being obedient. Praise the Lord. Some of us have come from backgrounds where we believe that whatever we have gone to university to study is what we must do. There is no law that said that. There is no place in the Bible that said that, hear the spirit of the Lord. Thou shalt do nothing else outside what you have studied in uni. Revelation 30 verse, 20, verse 45. <laughs> There's nothing like that. What you have gone to do in university is just to help you. That's why it's called a citadel of learning. A degree, a qualification is just to help your mindset to be able to rationalize things and put them in logical sequence the more. You must understand that everything, that's why the banner that we had, had all those things that underpin your skills. When you know what your talents are, some of you are very good with artistry. You take a pencil once and you can sketch everyone here without having to use the eraser once. And you've never done anything about it. You just say something I used to do in primary school. I know how to draw. <laughs> what are you doing with it today? You, do you know that some paintings can fetch you 100,000 pounds? You just need to know where to go and display it. Don't go and display it where they have no value for this. <laughs> they say, what is this? Go and... <laughs> Every day you go home, you go back home. When you are back from your teaching, your nursing, your whatever you do, you come back, you, you, you do more of the sketch. You do more of it. Then you leave it, you go back, you come back again, you do it. Then you take it to an art gallery one day. Go and compete. Let them say, I want to put this for the next exhibition. They say, wow, this is beautiful. 
come on the fifth of whatever, they give you the ticket, you come there, you display it. You will be shocked. Somebody comes and starts telling you what you did not even see in your own painting. You say, I can see stars. You see stars, good. Just bring the money. If you like, you see moon. <laughs> that one has nothing to do with me. <laughs> bring the money. <laughs> because that's a gift. Some of you can drive. You have been driving for 20 years. And you find that you're just a good driver. Never had one problem whatsoever. Nothing stops you from being a driving instructor. Do you know that in the evenings you can make money being a driving instructor? But you say, I mean driving. We teach people which drive. Ah, okay. You can make money. It's business. You can do it. You can do it. You can start a school. You can learn. These are things that are inside you. You, you just take them for granted. You must understand that every time you are able to dig deep and find what God has put there, you keep being in obedience to his command, and then you find that the prosperity comes. Some of us have no skill in different subjects, but we have management skills. You can manage things. You can easily find a problem, see a solution, and marry the two together. Don't say, I don't, that's not my business, that's not what I went to school to study. Don't say that, just look at it. Keep looking for the opportunity because it's a gift, not everybody has it. Not everybody can see that this is problem, this is solution. No, you can see it, so you work it together. These are the things that God commands us. Many people wonder how they can make income or increase their capacity for income generation, but these are basic things that God has put in everyone. God has not robbed anyone of his skill set. No, God has not. And we all know that when we do these things, we allow ourselves to be prospered by God. And when I say prosperity, don't forget, I'm not talking only about money. you find fulfillment. you find joy. Hallelujah. So we have individual responsibility to develop our skills. And this is by study, by application, and in the context of scriptural principles. This is what makes us different. Everybody else studies. Everybody else does CPD. Everybody else applies what they've learned. But we must understand that the believer must go by scriptural principles. What are scriptural principles? We must remember that God is the one who promotes. Our efforts cannot promote us. We must remember that we have come from him. Everything we have has come from him. We must remain humble. These are scriptural principles that must be applied to our own study and the application of things. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Say, but you must continue in the things. Tell your neighbor for me, continue in those things which you have learned and been assured of. There are things that you are learning there are things that, you, that you, you have learned, and there are things that you are learning, and there are things you must continue to learn. You must continue, knowing from whom you have learned them. And then he said, verse 15, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Dr. Miles Monroe of Blessed Memory shared how God used his mother I think I've shared this with you before, to read Ephesians 3.20 to him, and it changed his life forever. When you understand scripture, you become a different kind of person. The same man, as a child, when he was still under, we were still under colonial masters when he was growing up in the Bahamas, and there was a man, a Scottish man, who used to talk down on all of them and call them monkeys and say they can't learn. They are dull. They are this. They are that. And every one of them was beaten down constantly by this man. Of course, the man was ignorant. That was the world at that time. And uh, every time, these boys would go home crying, including Miles Monroe. And then one day, his mother saw him and said, son, what's wrong? He said, Mr. Call the name of the person said that we are monkeys, we can never learn, we can never do anything good. And the mother said to him, keep quiet. Opened Ephesians 3.20 and said, now read it. And the Bible said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly 
abundantly above whatever you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. He said, now, say, it is at work in me. He said, it is at work in me. He said, now, read it again and say, it is at work in me. And he said he read that scripture over and over and over and over again until the light came through. And from that day, he no longer saw himself as that person that the man was always describing. No good for anything. Can't make it. And God began to transform his life. By the time he was 17, 18, he became the most popular teenager in the Bahamas, holding crusades, having 3,000 other teenagers with him, empowering them with the same words. No wonder God saw that this was a vessel ready. And then the world eventually heard this message in the short time that he had to live in this world. I want you and I to know that there is a power that is at work in you. I said, there's a power that is at work in you. All you need to do is to see yourself beyond what you see yourself today. There is nothing that stops anyone here from becoming anything. All we need to do is to believe that we can become it and to understand that there is a power that is at work in us that is different. When you understand that, you don't join the rat race. You don't fight like everybody else. You work hard, you study, but you have your trust and your confidence in God. Hallelujah. May the Lord continue to lift you high in the name of Jesus. And verse 16 obviously tells us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. But verse 17 says, let's read together, that the man of God may be complete and what? Thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible says we are created in Christ Jesus for uh, where his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Paul said to Timothy, when you study the scriptures and you apply yourself to the things you have already learned as well, you will be able to be thoroughly equipped. The word equipped means you have the tools. Does that know what equipment is? The tools, the things that you need to do. So as you face the challenges growing up and moving from stage to stage, the tools that you need come out of the spirit. That makes you a different kind of person from those who have no relationship with God. Everyone who takes time to develop their skills become much sought after a person. That is why footballers, as I said, are paid as much as they are paid. Because they are sought after. There are some footballers that have played much more than some of those ones. And they, are not, they, they don't earn 10,000 pounds for, for their whole year. <laughs> But because some people push their skills to the next level and next level and next level, they become much sought after. Every one of us must understand, I don't frustrate myself at whatever level I am. I only speak to myself that, boy, you need to break out of this level. I can't sit down there and be frustrating. That, Why is this not working? Why is when you break out of it, it will work. When you break out of the level that you are in, it will work. Hallelujah. Stop harassing your husband or your wife. I'm telling you, 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 you can't do anything. You can't. Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pray for one another and say we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We are not going to remain at this level. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, 29. He said, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. We know that about David. I've given you the story of David before, 1 Samuel 16, when he was called by people he did not know, people that did not know him. They, told, they went to the king to tell about David. They said there is a guy. He's skillful. He can play instruments. He's also very good with fighting. David did not know. He was just there in the jungle fighting lion, fighting bear, and singing songs. People were watching him. And the day the king was tormented by a spirit, they went by themselves, not David going there. They went by themselves to tell, they, they, they went to tell uh, the king about David. Many years ago, I was lecturing at a polytechnic in northern Nigeria, just doing my job, doing my job, doing my job, and trusting God. I really wanted to practice. I know that by the grace of God, I have a, a talent to just teach and be in education. I've never struggled being in education. It's one of those things I find easiest doing. My father was an educator, and I grew up also into it. I just find that it's nothing at all to me by the grace of God. Standing in front of people by four years, I could stand in front of 600 people. It makes no difference to me. 
I've always done that, and I thank God for it. But I, I also enjoyed the practice of engineering. There was a satisfaction that comes from it, where you do something, you, you put something from paper, and you bring it out, and everybody sees it at the end of the day. I liked the experience. And I, you know, wanted to really practice, and uh, this was 1994, 1994, exactly. And um, I was just five years finishing my degree at that time, and a person 250 miles away from where I was was looking to employ a young engineer. And this, it was not advertised. It was only spoken of in their office. And a colleague of mine, who I used to preach to on campus, knew that I also was doing a bit of engineering work as we were studying in our master's at that time, in the early 90s, told his boss, he said, there is a guy I know. He is 250 miles away. He will do this job. From nowhere, I was in my office, no application, nothing. And that is how God gave me that first job. Within two years in that job, by the grace of God, within two years in that job, I was representing that company across the world. There is an announcement that must be made about you. It will be made. I say it will be made in the name of Jesus. Friends, I am humbly submitting to you. There is no job I have ever labored to get into. All the employment I had in this country, I've told you many times how somebody called me after preaching and said, I want to give you a job. From that job was another, I want to give you a job, and so on. Am I saying you should not apply to get a job? No, please, by all means, apply when you need to apply. But there are things that work for you. They have been working for me. They are still working for me. I pray that they will work for you in the name of Jesus. When God intervenes in that way, it becomes a different thing. When somebody calls you and says, are you so, 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 and so person? And you say, yes. You say, I have a job for you. And you have not advertised. You have not asked for it. There are forces that make it happen. Those forces will work for you. They work from the heavenlies. They will work for you. They will speak about your promotion in places you never imagined. In the name of Jesus. David was spoken about in the palace of the king when he was still in the wilderness. They went there and they spoke about him. He is my father indeed. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 2 verse 6. He said, Be, but who is able to build a temple since heaven of heavens cannot contain him? We read this earlier. Who am I then that I should build a temple except to burn sacrifice before him? Verse 7 says, Therefore send me at once a man skillful to work. And this is all it is. When the king needs a person, he looks for a person of skill. As you walk where you are walking, it may look as if you are being unrecognized. It may look as if you are being unappreciated. Keep walking it. Keep walking it. I say keep walking it. There is a king of kings that put the matter of people in the heart of earthly kings. His name is the God of heaven. It was in the time of Mordecai I learned about that king of kings. A king was about to be manipulated to kill Mordecai. And God, who is the king of kings, woke that king, that earthly king up in the night. And made sure he could not sleep. And began to tell him, go and dig up the books. Go and do stuff. And when the king went to do that, all it led to was Mordecai's lifting. I said, it led to Mordecai's lifting. That is how it shall lead to your lifting. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the devil is plotting against you will turn around to, lift to, to bring your lifting. In the name of Jesus. Just remain skillful where you are. Just keep doing your best with your latent abilities, your God-given talents and abilities. Hallelujah. I want to quickly close on the story of Daniel, which I'm sure we all know. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11, when the king Belshazzar, who was the son of Nebuchadnezzar, was tormented as it were. He was having a drink with many people and he began to see things in where they were having the party. And he didn't know what he was reading. The Bible says they came to him and they said, There is a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the Holy God and in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom 
they began to recite Daniel's CV because Belshazzar did not know it. They began to tell uh, uh, Belshazzar the king the CV of Daniel because they saw the skill that Daniel manifested. I decree that God will by himself announce your skill to the world in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in, we're found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the king made him chief of magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. But as we read on, you can read the rest of the story. Belshazzar himself died. Then Darius came up in Daniel chapter 6. You will see how God eventually prospered Daniel. Now, when Belshazzar, just to quickly emphasize, read chapter 5. But when Belshazzar saw that Daniel could interpret what was written and he could do those things, he said, I can give you things. Daniel said, no, keep your gift. Because we must understand something about God. Yes, you are to be rewarded. But always make sure that what you are doing is not because of the reward of man. Daniel took time to say, look, this is not about your gift. This is, this is not about what you will give me. It's about what God has put inside me to be a blessing. I want you to understand these perspectives that changes people's destiny and prosper them supernaturally. Daniel chapter 6, when Darius now came, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to build a whole kingdom. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one that the satraps might give account to them and the king would also suffer no loss. Let's read verse 3 together, loud and clear. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Now, we know that that very verse is our underpinning verse for our excellence core value. An excellent spirit was found in him, but he made up his mind to distinguish himself. He worked hard. He applied himself. He read books. He studied, and yet he worshipped God. And they saw that there was no way, verse 4, so the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. He was doing his job well, and yet he had the fear of God. There was no fault or error found in him. Lift up your two hands and say, Lord, from today, my work will no longer have fault. Or error. The same spirit that was at work in Daniel will make me skillful beyond error, beyond fault in the name of Jesus. They could not find it. Ha! They could not find it. Then they said, verse 5, we shall not find, they gave up, any charge against Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They know that that's the only thing they can use to get him. As for the perfection of what he does, there's no way you can find fault. But they know that if we find a law that goes against his spiritual belief, and I want you to be attentive here, this is still the strategy of the devil today. The devil may not be able to make you have fault that others may have. But he knows at the same time that you cannot compromise your stand in spiritual matters. He has not changed strategy. In fact, he doesn't know how to change strategy. He's so daft. The devil repeats exactly what he used to do in the Bible today. His only believers don't see it. He has no new trick. So he goes about trying to make it difficult for Christians to thrive in organizations, in business sectors, as long as they don't compromise. But I want you to know that like Daniel, keep displaying your skills to the glory of God. Don't let anyone rob you of it. Read the whole chapter. We don't have time to read it because of time. We have to stop. 
The Bible says in verse 28, let's read what happened to Daniel. Despite putting him in the lion's den when he did not bow down, when he, he did not stop praying, and they put him in the lion's den and they brought him out and the king said, now everybody must worship the God of Daniel. Read verse 28 with me, ladies and gentlemen. This is what no compromise will do to you. So this Daniel, I can't hear you. Hey, 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 I can't hear you. Read it with me loud and clear. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Somebody say from generation to generation. Rise to your feet. Where